A deadly attack on an Independence Day parade in suburban Chicago is raising all kinds of questions about the alleged shooter's previous run-ins with authorities, the warning signs in his music and his behavior. And what about those tough gun laws in Illinois and Highland Park specifically? Let's dig into all of that with former senior law enforcement advisor for Homeland Security, Charles Marino, and retired Las Vegas Police Lieutenant Randy Sutton. Great to have you both back with us tonight. Good Thanks evening. Having us, Shannon. Okay, Wall Street Journal has an editorial piece uh, tonight. They say that things have only gotten worse in the last couple of years. They say this, this weekend shootings come amid a new era of violent crime that began in 2020. Substance abuse increased and mental health deteriorated amid the pandemic and its lockdowns. Progressive law enforcement policies have contributed to an atmosphere of lawlessness and disorder. Um, Randy, what do you think... We don't have a motive yet for this young man, but but what about the conditions in which he may have been stewing the last couple of years? Well, uh, there's there's a lot to this story. You know, what, now that it more is coming out about previous run-ins with the police, this really points out the uh, the gap between mental health issues and law enforcement, because uh, law enforcement often are the first responders to mental health issues, but uh, there is, there is such a, a great gap between the reporting of, uh, of, of instances like this. Okay, now, if he was, if he was uh, committed because of his suicide attempt, there should have been a record for that when he went to purchase the weapons. There was also, of course, when, uh, when police responded and removed uh, that, that collection of knives, and there's, yet there was no flag on this. So I think that this shows that there, is, uh, there, there are some serious issues here that need to, we need to close that gap within law enforcement and mental health. Yeah, and Chicago Tribune reporting about this, talking about the previous suicide call attempt and, and also taking away these knives and daggers and things as his family said he was threatening to kill everybody, says the shooter posted online videos under the name The Awake Rapper, some with chilling references to violence. In September 2019, family members reported he threatened to kill everyone. Police notified Illinois State Police of the matter, but otherwise didn't have probable cause to make an arrest, authorities said. So, Charles, how does this work when somebody... You know, allegedly the family speaks up. They do the difficult thing and say he's threatening to, quote, kill everyone. But there's no way to arrest or follow up from that point. They did take the weapons that he had at the time, the knives and the daggers. Yeah, it's, it's a complicated process. And, you know, you want to remove the family as much as you can from being the ones that actually have to press the charges, for example. So that's why law enforcement, if they feel that the suspect at any time was a threat to himself or others, they could have involuntarily committed him to a mental health facility. I'm not sure if that's what took place in the first uh, interaction in 2019 in April, but certainly in the follow-up with the threat of violence against more people where he stated he was going to kill everybody in September, that certainly would have said, listen, this guy's a threat. We need to get him invol involuntarily committed. But if you look at the path to violence that this suspect took. It always starts with some type of a grievance. Then you see it develop into an ideation, which we see in his videos and his music and other writings. And then it goes into the planning stages, the preparations, and ultimately leads to the attack. So we see this suspect, based on everything that we're learning, following this path to violence that he took almost to a T. Yeah, so, Rainey, it raises the question, why do we always, in hindsight, have all of these clues, all of these red flags, all these reports by concerned neighbors or family or friends or school teachers or peers? I mean, why is there always this, always this trail after the fact? And, and also, I mean, Illinois, as we know, has some of the toughest gun laws out there, but the localities as well in this Highland Park locality has a restriction on AR-15s, AK-47s, and other semi-automatic weapons. So uh, clearly he wasn't, um, and we don't know what the guns are exactly, I haven't seen them reported yet, but multiple guns he allegedly obtained legally. I mean, there's so much here that didn't work when it needed to. Yeah, the, yeah, the system broke down completely. But, you know, this, this illustrates very graphically that, okay, there is a, there is a ban on, quote, assault rifles, unquote, um, in this city. Uh, that, that didn't work out very well, now did it? Because the, the reality is this, that as long as there are people that are committed to a, a violent action, uh, those people are going to obtain weapons. You know, and, and one of the things that we're not talking about, although I believe we should be, is that the, the mass shooting events that have occurred in Chicago alone, where you have two, three, six people 
shot, and it's not related to terrorism. It's related to crime. It's related to gang crime. And yet we're not even addressing this. And, and, and this, the, the, the lawlessness that is permeating this country now, um, you know, you, you just gave a, a, a few brief, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, highlights of it. But it is, it is rampant. It is destroying the, the, the fabric of our nation when you talk about people are, are absolutely unsafe no matter where they go or what they do. A parade where people could, could, could celebrate the birth of this country. And now that, that innocence is gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the Wall Street Journal piece I, I cited earlier, they went on to say that um, lawbreakers now feel like they can act with impunity and more average Americans feel like they have to arm themselves and protect themselves with guns because they believe the state can't or won't do it. Um, Charles and Randy, thank you very much for your insights. Please come back. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.